Father God, we just come to you tonight, Lord. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this place. We welcome you into our homes. Lord, that you would have your way tonight. Thanks, Jesus. Lord, we are, like always, we are just grateful, Father God, for all that you do. Lord, we just, um, we lift up to you this Bible study tonight, Father God, and we just ask, Lord, that you would open up your word, that you would reveal your truth to us, Father. Thank Lord, you. that you would, um, that you would just, we'd receive a revelation Thank you, from Father. you, Father God. Thank Lord, you, that you would speak through my husband tonight, Lord. Yes. Lord, that we would take from this um, study tonight to be able to apply it to our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. To be able to apply it to our walk with you, yeah. Lord. Yes. That it would affect us, Father God, from the inside out. Thank you, Father. Lord, um, as we're approaching Christmas, Father God, I lift up those families, Lord, that are going through hard times, Lord, whether it's loss of job, Lord, whether it's um, just feeling like the bank accounts are in lack mm -hmm. or the pressure that parents have um, mm -hmm. for their children, Lord, um, for marriages, mm -hmm. Lord, for I just pray, Lord, that your peace, Lord, would yeah. rest upon your people. Yes. Lord, that we would turn our face to to look at you and to keep you our center focus, Father God, through this season. Oh, oh, Lord, that um, we would not lose sight in the hustle and bustle of going to and fro, Lord, but that you, that this this Christmas holiday, Father God, that it'd be all about you and the birth of your son that you sent. Oh. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, I also pray, Father God, for um for Curtis's friend, Lord. I ask, Father God, that you would just give him um peace during this difficult time he's going through, Lord, but that you would just reveal truth to him, Lord, that you would give him clarity, Lord, that Thank you would you, direct Father. his steps, Father God, that he would know whether to turn right or turn left, Father God. Yes. The one thing we do know, Father God, is that he can turn to you and yes. that will never lead him astray. So Lord, I just pray, Father God, that during this time, Lord, that, um, that he would just turn to you, Father God. Thank you. You are his peace. Yes. And that you won't lead him astray. Father God, I also lift up Curtis's other friend, Father God, who's just grieving and going through the loss of his mother, Lord. I ask, Father God, that you would just mm. touch, touch his heart, Lord God, that you would just give him peace, Father God, through this time, Lord. Lord, we just, you. that you would bring people around him, Lord, that can mourn with him, that would grieve with him, Father God, but that, Lord, that you would give him the assurance, Father God, that, he, that our eternity, Father God, is in you. Yes, and that we don't have to have despair. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our children. Yes, Lord. For all of us, Father. I wanted to say, all of our family and friends and, and children, we, they've each, I've had children that have had some medical issues with their children, and their children have been healed in areas. And um, there's been, you know, there's been COVID situations still kind of going around. Father, I thank you for healing in that area. Yeah, I thank you yeah. for these ministries, Father, I, I like to say that because we have these churches that I just pray for the pastors and leaders and ministry leaders yes, that are involved Father. in ministry in any level. I don't care if it's greeting at a door, if it's teaching the word, if it's children's yes, ministry, Father. Father, keep them solid because it takes a foundational faith. Yes, Father, we Father. know that your word um, guards us and it guides us, Father, but we also, we're human beings and we have our own oppression. We have our own afflictions, Father, but keep our minds, yes. those that are in ministry, uh, yes. clear when it comes time to deliver your word without that without that filtering into our minds. Thank so I just Jesus. ask that you guard the lost and the ones that are searching. Yes, Father, just Father. make your revelation known to them. Thank you, Father. And Father God, I just lift up Danny's parents to you, Lord God. 
Lord, Thank I just you. pray that your hand would continue to be upon them, Father God, that as Thank they're you, as they're going through their golden years, Lord God, that you would Thank just you. walk alongside them, Father God. Thank that you, you would um, touch their health, Lord God, touch their minds. Yes, yes. Lord, they would continue to um, age in grace, Lord. Yes, Father. Lord, that there would be um, peace for mm-hmm. Danny yes. as he walks alongside his parents through these times. Thank you. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Lord, we thank just thank you, you, Lord, that your hand's upon them, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. That you'd be a, a hedge of protection around them. Yes. Lord, yes. I also lift up mom and Bob to you, Father God, that yes. as a, they get ready to do their driving and their traveling. Yes. Father yes. God, excuse me. <laughs> Lord, I just Thank pray you. that you a hedge of protection around them, Father God, in their vehicle, Lord. Thank that you. That you would Jesus. go before them, pave the way, Lord God. They would be able to get to houston safely father god and and back up to our home after yeah. that and then, and then back home lord that you would ride alongside them the whole entire way father god yes i pray god. there'd be no issues um with the vehicle um i pray yes. that, that you would just um be your be their peace in the vehicle as well lord god and i pray that thank um, you Jesus. Thank i just thank you. you that we get to look forward to seeing them father god Thank and so, Lord, t- tonight we just lift up this time to you, Father, and I just ask that you would be with us, yeah. and we just give you all the praise and the glory, Lord, for all that you do in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> What's up, friends? How y'all hey, doing tonight? Man. Doing well. Yeah. Doing well. We still doing this thing, man. We're, we've been hey. at it a while, huh? Hey, man. <laughs> My mama taught me consistency. I figure we'll stay with it. That's what she yeah, taught. So, yeah, she taught mother yeah. did well. <laughs> did well. <laughs> y'all, y'all ready for the word? You ready? Hey man, Absolutely. let's do it. Okay, we're gonna keep this simple. Listen, Paul's writing a letter to the Romans, as you guys know. He's in the Church of Corinth, and he's writing this letter. And so we went through the first four chapters, basically the first uh, chapters three of Romans, verses twenty-one through thirty-one, basically zoom in on. Paul's talking about justification through faith in Jesus, through grace, through faith, that mm-hmm. according to that, we're righteous. He mm-hmm. became sin for us, and we became righteous, which that same word, justification, it's the same word as righteous. Righteous. Yep. We were justified through faith in him. So and then the, the the recent chapter, the last chapter, we we and he made examples of that to kind of send it home. He mentioned Abraham and King David. And I mm-hmm. thought a really good one was last week, as he mentioned that Abraham, look around Genesis chapter 15, uh, God made a pro- God justified him, right? So he, mm. through, through faith in God, he was justified. He was considered and called righteous. And mm-hmm. it wasn't for another two chapters later, I think in Genesis 17, that a, that a pagan Gentile who was uncircumcised in Genesis 17 would then become circumcised, become the first and father of the Jews. So we shouldn't get hung up on law considering this person that we, you know, the father of the Jews, Abraham, was once a pagan Gentile who was uncircumcised, but God called him righteous through no works. Mm. I want to point that out. So if we follow, if we're we're Jewish, if we're Gentile, if we follow Abraham, know that he was justified the way we are through faith in God before he did an action of circumcising the flesh. I want to Mm. point that out. So basically the first couple chapters uh, was about justification through grace, through faith in Jesus. We were considered righteous. So chapters one verses one through 20 emphasize the need for forgiveness and the sin of all humanity. And so how would that be reconciled? Well, by sending a son, Jesus, there had to be innocent mm-hmm. death. So the heart of the reformation, the church, you know, the or, our original church um, was about how we're accepted by God because of what he did. No human works. That's the point. That's the point of this, you know, Martin Luther. Uh, that's the point of the whole thing is that it's not our works. Now, there are verses that say um, we will we'll be known by our works, but that's a yeah. New Testament thing. That's not referring to works to get to God. Right. Okay. Right. People like to twist that. And so mm-hmm. the first part, really, the whole book of Romans is this idea that, we, that we're considered righteous through faith in Jesus. That's the whole point. And I want to kind of keep hammering that home. 
So Paul's writing this letter to the Romans who are considered the saved. They're people that are Christians. And he says, it's not through human works. So in Romans four last week, Paul shows that he wasn't, a, it wasn't a new idea. He goes back to Abraham. Like I mentioned, it wasn't some new idea that he came up with. And that's why he points out Genesis 15 verse six with Abraham being ca called righteous. So Abraham says, Abraham believed God. So it was counted to him as righteous, meaning justified or counting. It's like uh, imagine in a court system. It's not that you just do something good. It's actually, it goes in your credit and your spiritual bank account. It's you are credited as righteous. So you're physically, spiritually, emotionally, you are called righteous. It's a credit to our account. That's the point. And so he even goes further back when he talks about King David. That was last week. So basically, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and read the last few verses of Romans 4, 23, and we're going to keep going so we have the context for today. Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right. So could you go ahead and read uh, verses 4, 23 to the end? This will keep us in context for today. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen. So, say, does everybody Amen. understand? Can somebody here tell me what did that say in layman's terms? Somebody, anybody? Anybody anybody completely get that? Or do you have an idea, just a way to put that in layman's terms? No? I can go over it if what? you guys aren't sure. I want to make sure we're clear. More, yeah, more, more, more or less, well, basically Jesus died, gave his, gave his life, gave it for our offense, for our sins. Correct, verse 22, exactly. Yes, and he... He was raised again, basically, to, it just to just to show that you know that he has defeated sin. Well, with him defeating sin, we also defeat sin. So that justifies us as being, you know, being with him. And you know, when it comes to justification, exactly. And I want to. That's that's very well put, Danny. I want to say something that just came to me through the Holy Spirit. That chapter ends by showing in verse 22, it says, and therefore it was imputed or put upon him. We're right. supposed to die for our sins. Right. But he took right. that on. Yep. What's interesting is I just noticed something. God used the last few verses and said it was uh, now it was not written for his sake alone, but it was imputed to him, put on him, but for right. the sake of us. So we can be righteous. Yep. But yet yep. in the next chapter, it's going to talk about how, also, because of sin, sin and at with Adam was imputed was imputed to us. So, what That's I'm saying right. is, yeah. first yeah. it says that basically Jesus took this upon him, so we don't have to spiritually die. Right. So yeah. that's good when we when we assume that kind of royal, we kind of inheritance. Yet mm -hmm. we also received a ro we're going to talk about a royal inheritance because of Adam sinning that we have to die. Did you ever think about mm -hmm. that? So at first it mm -hmm. lets us know what. Because of Jesus, the benefit, now we have to accept the other benefit, which isn't a good one from Adam, that we carry that weight of sin. Mm -hmm. yep. You could say, well, we didn't sin, so why would we die? Well, there's a word for that, It's and we'll go over that. But basically, you're right. It says, he delivered up uh, for our offenses. He became sin so that we could become righteous. That's the whole book yes. of Romans. Yep. Very yep. well put, Danny. That's, that's mm -hmm. great. Thank you. And so... Chapter five, I'm going to read a few. I'm going to have Alana read the first. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read or have her read the first verse. And we're going to kind of have most of my notes are in the first few verses. So go ahead and read chapter five, verse one. Book. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. now you're going to see you're going to see therefore is in chapter five, verse one, chapter eight, verse one and chapter 12, verse one. That means it's, there's a thought that isn't better than what precedes but it but take note of the new thought because of the last thought okay that's right. the, here so yeah. he says therefore based on what we just read about what jesus did for us are we clear on that mm -hmm. yeah therefore being justified or righteous is what that word means mm -hmm. by faith in jesus not on our own account there's nothing we can do to gain it by faith is the only way we can gain it mm -hmm. we we 
have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I can assure you that we carries on to you and I. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It says we have peace with God through, through our Lord owner, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So therefore we're justified by faith. All of us have peace. Now there's different kinds of, it's there's Shalom peace, but there's a fact, not a feeling of peace. I'll explain that with God. And that means intimately face to face. Well, I'm going to give you a couple little notes about some peace, how I'm going to break it down through our Lord Jesus Christ. Before I get, and I'm going to go ahead and go here first. So if you're taking notes, this is a good, worthy of notes. So there's two types of peace, even though peace is the same thing. There's two ways that I'm using peace here. I think the Bible uses verse five, uh, chapter five, verse one says peace with God, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which should generate the peace of God. Okay. Now here's, there's two separate columns. I'm going to give you the peace with and the peace of God. Okay. The first one, the peace with God is a fact. That's a fact. Peace with God is written down. We have peace because of him. We mm -hmm. have peace with him. That's the way I understand it. And if I'm missing something, you guys, please let me know. Then there's a peace of God which is a feeling, not a fact. That's how I, I have uh, the peace of God with me. Having peace with God is a fact. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. now you can say, man, you know what? I'm not afraid of death because I have, I have the peace of God. There, there's two ways you could use it. Another way you could look at it is peace with God <laughs> is judicial. Remember, it's been counted for you. It's been yeah. counted for your righteous. So that's yes. actually yes. like a judicial credit. Peace with God is a fact. Peace of God's a feeling. Peace with God is judicial. The peace of God is experiential. You have the peace of God if you're if you have you follow the way I'm separating them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They're both yep. peace, but one is yep. kind of a judicial yep. written judicial. thing. Right. And you have the peace with God's objective. That's objective. It's just it is what it is. It's it's judicial. Same thing. But the peace of God is subjective. It's how you feel. It's having peace with him. Peace of him, excuse me. Now, I don't know if you guys need to know that. I just thought it was an interesting thing to write down. Um. Uh, real quick, can I read these two? Okay. And then these two, I got two left. Go ahead. This might explain it a little bit better. It says, um, this is not the peace of God spoken of in other places, such as um, Philippians 4, 7. This is peace with god the battle between god and ourself is finished and he won winning us some never knew they were out of peace with god but they were like drivers ignoring red lights of a police car in their rearview mirror they are in trouble even if they don't know it and it will soon catch up to them yeah one's like we're with him the other one's like because of him mm. i don't know how another mm. way to word it you have peace with them and then having the peace of God is experiential. It's a feeling. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so I love this one. Jesus as Savior brings peace with God, because that's judicial, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. That's, that's not experiential. That's a that's that's judicial. But Jesus as Lord as the owner brings peace of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. I want you to really. When we're done, you have to really think about what I just said because it's I didn't get it at first. And when you think about what I'm saying, if you write it down, that's pretty interesting. And so, um, yeah. I'm hey, John, say, say it again, John. What part? About uh, as uh, as Lord, we have. Oh, Jesus as Jesus Savior brings Savior. peace with God. Okay, makes sense. Because that's judicial. Right. right. That's a fact. That's judicial. That's objective. That's not subjective. So it's peace with God. Right. According and to scripture. It, right. But the of the peace of God's man, I have I have the peace of God with me today. But we're not judicially saying and the scripture tells us we have peace with God because we're righteous. But then right. there's the experience of his peace. Does that make sense? Yeah. So is it is it is it fair to say in order to have peace of God? We have to have peace with God. Yes, first. sir. That's exactly the right thing to say. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In order to have mm -hmm. the peace of God in your daily life, yes, first, you, you have, have to be called righteous. Just yes, through yes. faith and have the peace with God. With God. Judicial. It's written about you. 
Yes. Okay. Otherwise, you can't have the peace of God. That's right. That's right. Say, in order oh, to have blessed. the peace. Yeah. In order to have the peace of God, you have to have, mm. have a relationship. Yes, yes. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's. I'm so glad you guys get that because so many people say, "Oh, listen to this. I'm so blessed." <clears throat> Are you? How yeah. can you be blessed if you don't receive the promise and it's not in your life? Yeah. You only can be blessed, even though, yeah, I would say you are blessed. But how can you say you're blessed if you don't actually have a relationship with Jesus? Right. Yeah. Because you're That's saying true. that experientially. You're not saying it judicially if you don't have a relationship. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. That's a good it. That's a good word right there. Not yeah, for me. It is, yeah. it, it is a good word. Yeah, that's the Amen. kind of stuff that you don't think about until you really realize it. Yeah. And so um, I want to say this. So there's there's for note takers, this is good. I didn't really write all the scriptures, but there's basically four benefits that we're reading about here in the first part of Romans chapter five. It's interesting. The, the one we just read, Romans 5, 1, says we have peace with God. That's one of the benefits, right? Being justified. Number two, we have privilege of access now to God. That's verse two. Uh, also, John 14, 6. And then there's two more. I didn't write scriptures on them because I had other stuff to do. We have a preview of our future. These are just fun little side notes. And number four, we have purpose for our pain and suffering. That Those are, those are kind of deep. Did you get that? It, maybe it's something to think about later. Those are fairly deep. Once you think about it, it'll click. Mm -hmm. yeah. so don't try to read into that one too much because it took me a while to process all that That's so good. Um, yeah once it hits you you'll be like oh yeah and then we're going to find mm -hmm. out when we have all this um, um affliction or what's the um we're going to talk about um when we have these uh tribulations here mm -hmm. in just a minute we're going to explain why we have those i love how the bible explains everything we can go through yeah. and so do you keep can i keep reading and verse two says, by whom, Jesus, okay, mm -hmm. by whom, Jesus, also we have, I want you to notice that word we have. I know it seems like sometimes I pick the words apart too much, but he said a yod and a tittle for a reason because they all matter. The words and the letters that make up the words, right? By whom, Jesus, we also, we have. Well, that's interesting because that we have in the Greek structure is a past perfect tense and i'll tell you why i'm telling you that it's completed he already did it but it's continuing and nothing can change it if you look at the greek structure and he did it but it also is doing it and we can't change that he is doing it and that he did it i know it seems like a lot of information for we have but that's why bible study is so important mm -hmm. by whom jesus we have access okay mm -hmm. well that word access the word for that's Prosogogi, prosogoge. Okay. Um, we have, I'll get to that in a minute. We have access by faith into his grace, into notice mm -hmm. that word into his grace, wherein we stand, that means firmly, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So having access, I pointed that out because there's so much in one sentence, by whom Jesus also we have privileged approach access is another judicial term we have privileged approach so when he says we have access it's been counted for us in his judicial spiritual branch that now we are allowed literally to be there and now we are we are accounted for and we we have privileged approach just like if your son let's say you go to uh i don't know you go to uh I'll just make up anybody. Let's say you go to Joel Osteen's church or whatever, and you try to, hey, I need to talk to Joel real quick. Well, they're going to tell you, well, you have to go through my people. But if Joel's son shows up, hey, I need to see my dad. Come on, you have privileged access because mm -hmm. it's been counted for you as, as a righteousness. Mm -hmm. You are his son. Now you're sons and daughters. Right. So now, yeah. come on in. Everybody yeah. else has to wait in line now. Come on now. So, by whom also we have privileged access, I added that word, privileged approach, by faith, because we talked about the idea of Romans, into his grace, which Romans 11.6 explains that. Um, somebody read Romans 11.6 real quick, uh, on the fly. Who's got the Bible? 
what do they say? Word of God, being at this Bible study without a Bible is like being on I four without a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's 11 6. Yeah, come on with it, Danny. It says, and if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So what's he saying? I'm going to read it again. <laughs> by whom we have. So I'm going to say it in literal terms, verse 2. Because of Jesus, we have a privileged yeah. access through our faith in him into his right. free gift that we can't earn unmerited favor right wherein we stand meaning we are firmly attached to him now like abraham was and we rejoice throw a party if you will in the hope of the glory of god i'm gonna tell you hope's a big word because faith without uh uh um what's the scripture about faith and hope uh hope faith is the evidence of what's the, somebody help me out yeah, uh, uh, faith is the uh, evidence of things hoped for. It's uh, yeah, the yeah, evidence of, evidence of what, things and what, uh, evidence of things not seen. So hope brings what? Hope brings faith. I mean, hope, faith. hope, faith. Yep, faith brings yep. hope. Yep, faith brings hope. Yes. Yeah, right. It's an expectation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like having. Yep. It's like yeah, exactly. And so, yep. um, attempted it's to one of those it's one of those words that should always be capitalized. Hope. Hope. Oh. <laughs> yep. This is why I like the King James Bible. As much as there's a lot of other Bibles, like the ESV, it doesn't capitalize God. It's it's literary. So it doesn't yeah. capitalize like Holy Spirit. It actually capitalizes based on English grammar structure, not on Bible structure, which is why right. I like people using the 1828 dictionary because it came from the King James Bible. So you're going to get... Mm. Proper punctuation, not according to man, but according to God, which is what King James does. Mm. Not mm. the ESV, no offense. Mm. This is why Got I like it. the 1828 dictionary. Mm -hmm. So information, mm. maybe you can use it or lose it or whatever. But um, anyway, so attempting to earn what you've been given, this is interesting. It's mm. a form of rejection of the intent of the giver. I'll say that again. Attempting to earn with somebody. Here's an example. Danny tries to give me. Remember the first time we met, you bought me lunch. Right. 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 I'll put it mm -hmm. this way. Me attempting to earn what you offered me. That's mm -hmm. a type of rejection. In other words, you just took yep. my blessing. Right. Right. Yep. That ruins what you were doing, Danny. Mm -hmm. I love yep. the basic principles of this book. This is the yeah. most contemporary book that we should have today. This applies to us directly. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. This, is, this, this book is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's a beast. <laughs> it is. I'm going to keep, we all good. I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Romans 3, go ahead and read that, beloved, for me, if you don't mind. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, yes. knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Okay. I'm not going to do this on every single you want... verse. You have something? <laughs> No, I wasn't sure if you wanted to finish off. The oh, does it go? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. Come on. And hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You got to tell me to keep things in context. Please take over. Uh, that's what I like that you do. So it's cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was, I made a note here and I, I'm trying to figure out what my, I had a, a reason for making a note here. It's, it's a side note. It's kind of unrelated, but it applies to something. I can't remember you guys. You know, I do that sometimes. I made a note that says the third commandment is about in bat. What's the third commandment? Anybody know? Let y'all look it up. <laughs> I'm a cheat. I'm a Google. <laughs> That's all right. I do know the third commandment. I just want to see if y'all, how quick you. I'm trying to interact a little bit. When I have no other God, no. Okay, I had a reason. I don't know the reason for it right now, but I want to. I want to read it because it was important to me to mention this. Maybe it'll make sense later. So you know me with squirrel. But the third commandment: <laughs> Don't take the Lord's name in vain. It applies. Yes, to it, we'll find out. Yes, yeah. It's about ambassadorship. We're using His name when we should use it for a purpose, not for nothing. 
It's not mm -hmm. about our language, but it can be. You can take the Lord's name in vain. I'm sure I have a purpose for this. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can take the Lord's name in vain, and that's and that and cursing can be, but it's actually not about language. It's about doing anything or saying anything that's not glorifying God. If we use his name, it should be to glorify God. Mm -hmm. I wrote that for a reason, y'all. I don't know why, but it goes with something. So I just had to write that down. I had to tell y'all. <laughs> So it'll probably make sense here in a minute. It, it'll come back. It'll come to yeah. you. And so she read, I promise it will at one point. Where'd you start? What's up? I went three through five. Okay. So verse three, remember we read in hope of the glory of God. So we have access, we have privileged approach. And he says, not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Well, who wants to glory in tribulations? Tribulations stink. Mm -hmm. Or do they? He said, also, Paul says, knowing the tribulations, tribulation worketh patience. People often confuse the great tribulation with tribulation. Matthew 24, the birth pains. A lot of yep. times we can, we think we're in tribulation, like the end times, and we're not. Right. It's not yeah. The reference to the birth pains. Well, it's another day. I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. But right here it says, not only so, but we glory tribulations. This is Paul saying we should glory. In other words, we should glory the word for tribulations is philipsis, T-H-L-I-P-S-I-S, philipsis. Not only so, he says, but we glory. So we don't just rejoice uh, because of our access in verse two, but we also glory in the tribulations. I'm going to tell you something. There was a there was a way they used to torture uh, in certain areas called pressing. There's a thing called pressing. <laughs> you can look it up on your own time. And they put like a board or something over you and they they'd, they'd lay you down and they'd put rocks now there was stoning right that's one thing but they'd they put boulders or big rocks on you and slowly they'd add more and more and more until every time you breathed out and your chest went out and the, and the air was out of your diaphragm you would just die from suffocation mm -hmm. which oddly enough sounds a lot like how jesus's suffocation might have felt mm-hmm and so it says right here, not only so, we glory in tribulations. That word means the pressing, the pressing in, the pressing on, like the church of Smyrna was under mm -hmm. heavy persecution. That word myrrh means to crush. It's a, it's a plant. They would crush it. And through that persecution of the third church called Smyrna, over that persecution, when Jesus decided to write a letter, this is Holy Spirit moment. I didn't write this down. In Revelations chapter, excuse me, let me fix that. Revelation chapter two and three, when Jesus was writing the seven letters to the seven church, mm -hmm. there was two churches that had nothing bad written about them. One of them was the church of Smyrna. And he basically, matter of fact, can we read the intro to Revelation three real quick, somebody? That's the Holy Spirit. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. Revelation three. Okay. okay. I'll do it. Oh, wait, no. Was it uh, the church of Smyrna? Um, okay. Are I think ready? it's Revelation three. Hold on a minute. This is important. So forgive me if I was off. Am I, am I right? Yeah. It says the angel. Sorry, I had the wrong one, Mom. My my my, my apologies. Which one? Two eight. Okay, Sorry. Revelation two verse eight. Sorry about that. That's okay. Two eight. <clears throat> yeah, I want you to read this. The Holy Spirit gave this to me right now, so this must be big. Okay, and unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive oh man I, I just got the holy spirit hit me man keep going what is he what's he about okay. to say right I there that, okay i number uh, nine i know thy works and tribulation and poverty. what's that what'd you just read I know thy works and tribulation, and tribulation and poverty but thou oh. art rich and I blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the but synagogue, are the synagogue of the saved. saved. What's he say in verse 10 now? Read that. Fear, fear none of those things which thou shalt Go ahead. Suffer. Sorry to interrupt you. Say that slower one more time. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold... Oh. The devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. 
but thou faithful unto death, and I will give you give thee a crown of life. Okay, listen, there's Amen. there's a crown. There's diadema and there's Stefano's crown. The one's a royal crown, mm -hmm. the one that he wears, the king of kings, and then there's the ones that we put on on earth. There's wow. Stefanos and there's uh um um diadema crowns. Uh -huh. You know what's interesting? I literally had none of this plan when I thought about Revelation 2, the church of Smyrna. Oh, he said funny. to them, and I'm not reading the verse, she has it in front of her, I don't. He he said to them, listen. I'll say it in my words. I'm proud of you. Through your tribulation, I mm -hmm. have nothing to say about you, but stay strong, brother church, sister church. Because the day of demon, when he unport when he unloads his wrath at the end of Revelation near the middle, excuse me. Uh yeah, when he pours out the bowls and the trumpets and all that, there's a part where he says that the martyrs will be held first. The people that the, the word for martyrs is martus. That means uh, Martus is um, a witness, a martyr is a witness, somebody somebody who was willing for the faith to accept tribulation and persecution. So back to Romans 5, 3, with that thought, this is all mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. I didn't map this out. He says, and not only so, but we glory so, but we glory in tribulation. And that's mm -hmm. all the Bible. Tribulations are good. There's another word that starts with tribulation that we have because of tribulation. It's called testimony. Come on testimony <laughs> is tribulation because of mm. tribulation because the muscles being i don't know this from experience but danny does because the muscles mm. being pulled at the gym and mm. at the gym, <laughs> they get bigger and stronger right danny yeah I yeah know i used to know i used to know that <laughs> so we're going to move faster when we go through here there's only 21 verses but i want to point this out he says not only so how good jesus is but we glory also by the pressing, by the by the tribulation, it's our testimony. It's the power of God. It's He can. And I'm going to mention a few things that tribulation does for us. He says, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. I patience. love how J Pastor James did how to add patience to our faith. He did a sermon yeah. series about that. That word mm -hmm. knowing, the word for that in Greek is edo or edo. Knowing is to perceive or discover something. That which produces patience. So knowing mm -hmm. produces patience. Patience. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not about how long, how long, oh man, I've been waiting, God, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. Did you wait right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you understand that through tribulation, oh, I'm fasting, the Bible says not to talk about it and groan, man. If you're going to do it for the glory of the Lord, or if you're going to buy somebody a, a sandwich in line, don't turn around and wait for them to like be like, yeah, they think I'm cool. Listen, he, he can't do anything with that. Don't tithe with a frumpy heart. He can't Come on. use that. He doesn't want it. Mm -mm. Tribulation is what blesses us. Come on. We're going to talk about that. Uh, look, I'm going to give you a scripture reference. Hebrew chapter 5, verse 8. Can somebody read that real quick? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Come on, everybody. Come on. I'm going to keep you guys awake. That's why I'm interacting more with you guys. i got to wake you up. This is interactive. Kurt, right, hey, Curtis, 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 it's your turn. Teachers, back, teachers back in class. By the way, pause. Sorry, Mom, pause. I'm going to start rotating so you guys stay prepared so I can keep you all awake and we can interact more. <laughs> okay. okay. Hebrews 5, 8. Though no, he, he were a son, yet he learned... Uh, he learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. What did it just say? It said he learned to be obedient by the things that suffered. That he suffered. So through. he was knowing. <laughs> he had patience. He received patience. Yep. Tribulation. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I love that. Some people look. Some people don't don't believe Revelation chapter four one. The, the um um. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and move on because somebody's not gonna like it. Um, there's people <laughs> in my church that are going I'm not gonna talk about it because I'm not gonna rabbit hole. But there is a theology that uh, they use this verse Romans three to just like they have one for Calvinism. This is the one that has to do with the rapture to disprove that it's Revelation four one to say that oh if you're a Christian, you're supposed to go through tribulation. So what they do is they take verse three. And they say, not only so, we're, we glory in our tribulations. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. There is a theology that uses that tribulation until you look up the word thalipsis. It, do, it doesn't mean the tribulation we're going through 
at the end of times, but they like to take this word tribulation. No, that's the ones we go through now. Now, right. And, yeah. and they try to use this as God's wrath, the tribulation, Matthew 24. Yeah. You, you guys follow what I just said? Right. There's yep. a theology. There's pre-wrath and there's all these. They try to take yeah. that and they try to say, well, they don't believe Revelation 4, 1, that when it says the church was caught up um, because the church is lifted. So that means they're not appointed to wrath. Well, that actually is scripturally accurate. That's right. Even though people will say, well, other people before you, they had to go through tribulation. Yes, not the final tribulation. We all oh, go through tribulation. Right. But people like to take, listen, I've been, people want to debate me on the rapture, every kind of angle. Keep coming. They ain't going to, it's, it's all, all you have to do is look in the Greek. So I'm ready for it. So people try to take away Revelation 4 rapture. Mm -hmm. using this verse this is a key one romans 5 3 look we're supposed to we're supposed to glory in tribulation that's human tribulation man that ain't rapture tribulation yeah that's, 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 yeah, that's day to day yeah you're mixing stuff up <laughs> to try to make your theology make sense mm -hmm. no oh, we're the bride that's supposed to be that taken up man. when jesus shows up to get his bride this is not the second coming that's revelation 19 when he mm -hmm. lands on earth but when he comes back at the rapture he doesn't land on earth there was a first coming, then he comes back at the rapture to meet his bride in the right cloud. in that clouds, yeah. Because they are not appointed to his final wrath, right? And then yeah. they go away. He prepares a place, and then in Revelation chapter nineteen, he shows up on a white horse, and guess who's with him? The saved ones. We mm -hmm. come back to do battle. That's why it says he's riding a white horse, not the first one of the four horsemen, but the one in Revelation nineteen says. He shows up with his vesture dipped in blood on his thigh. It's written. And it says he's wearing not a crown, but many crowns. Crowns. Diadema Stephanos. It's not the earthly crown. He's wearing many crowns. And there's not a black, a pale, and a, a red horse. Uh-uh. His homeboys mm. are all on white horsemen. That's <laughs> us. You know why we're on white horsemen? Because judgment's coming. That's what a horse means. And we're, according to his word, we are righteous. So we ride in with him during revelation 19 which is the second coming the rapture mm -hmm. is not the second coming revelation 19 when he lands on a horse of judgment that's the second coming they try to use this verse to remove the rapture of revelation 4 chapter 1 uh, chapter 4 verse 1 which i'm about to go into revelation bible study down the road i just want to say that this is not tribulation during his wrath are we all clear on that okay got it yeah i had to go there man I had to. Yeah, you passionate about that thing. I am because it's true. <laughs> yeah, People like yeah. to twist and mess with stuff and twist it. <laughs> so I am. So I'm going to go ahead and read this real quick. There's 10 reasons I wrote down. This is interesting. Alicia, you're going to like this. There's 10 reasons Christians have trials. Uh, this, this is the 10 that I wrote down. Okay. Number one, to glorify God. Because it's on. all about bringing him glory. Tribulation brings him glory. Martyrs. When you sacrifice something for him, that brings him yep. glory. Number one. Number two, <laughs> discipline for known sin. How you handle it. Can I keep going? You ready? Number three, 10 reasons we have trials to prevent us from falling into sin, Danny. Our testimony. Come on. Come on. Seriously. Number four, to keep us from pride. Yeah. To keep us from pride. These are good, man. Like, oh, why does God, why does he, oh, why does he let good things happen to bad people? No, he doesn't cause the bad thing. He's just there when it happens. Sin caused it. He just rides along so we're not alone. He doesn't promise we won't have pain. He just promises we won't go through it alone. People love to blame God whenever they're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. They love to blame God. Okay, you ready? Number five, to build our faith. That's another reason we have trials. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Number six, to cause growth. This is good stuff, you guys. It is. It's good word. Ten reasons we should have trials. Number seven, to teach us obedience. Ooh, this is good. And discipline. And man, I am lacking in that area. My wife sees it every day. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Look, no. if, hey, 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 it's tough, man. Church you. is full of sinners, man, and heaven's heaven's full of people that sin. I mean, I'm just like anybody else. 
Yeah, Look, number now. eight, number eight, well, one of the reasons Christians have trials, to equip us to comfort others. Come on, now that's a testimony right there. Yeah. It will bless somebody else. These are right worthy, man. These are noteworthy. Number nine, to prove the reality of Christ in us. Some of this stuff, I want you to think about it later and you'd be like, oh yeah, it doesn't always register right away. That's one of them. To prove the reality of Christ in us. Let that sink in later and it'll hit you. Mm. So this is another one when you process this if you look at your notes after we're done with bible study you're going to love this you ready for the last one 10 reasons that christians have trials for testimony to the angels Ooh. that one's deep you got to think about it yeah i left that for last That's okay good. romans 5 verse 4 to jerry read it i'm going to keep going okay you guys ready romans 5 4 and, and i promise we're going to move through this by eight o'clock, we'll be done. Okay. And he says, and patience, experience, and experience, oh. hope. Experience equals proof, and it's a specimen of tried worth. Does that make sense? Anybody mm -hmm. need explanation? Say that again. Okay. And it says, and, and patience, comma, experience, comma, and experience, comma, hope. He says mm -hmm. it twice experience and experience slash hope experience is the proof or specimen of tried worth in other words tested worth do you see what that's saying okay mm -hmm. so re re verse four let's back it up so you get it and make sure we're clear three says and not only so we glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation work is patience because of verse three Verse four says, and patience, experience, mm -hmm. and experience, hope. He's talking about hope. patience, experience. Then he's talking about experience, hope, being hope. Hope. Mm -hmm. he's, yeah. he's, he's putting them in order. This one causes this one. That one causes this one. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you have any questions at all, you can hit me up after Bible study, and I'm happy to kind of help with it. Okay? That way we can keep moving. Everybody good? Okay, good. So uh, experience is a proof specimen of tried worth. So, um, so yeah, verse five says, and hope, and I'll let you read next. And hope, here's the continuation, right? With patient experience, experience, hope. Now he's saying, and hope make us, he's given an order, maketh not ashamed or disappoint, disappointed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, you know, Acts chapter two. He's basically, as you look at this carefully in your own study, he's doing these. I'm not going to try to explain it because it'd take me probably half an hour. He's given us an order of how one affects the other, affects the uh, other, and it yeah. works its way down to what? And it's abroad in the hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's how we get it received, and it's given unto us. He's mm. given you the order of how it happens. Mm -hmm. And that took me a while to process that so I could deliver it. So I recommend you guys actually look at this part of Romans 5 when you have some time on your own, okay? Because it's really cool how it outlines the order of how things happen. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, it's easier to explain one-on-one -on -one to somebody, but moving on. It's deep. Um, yeah, it's very deep. This this chapter is mm -hmm. deep. So I made a note. Isn't it funny? Imagine, imagine if the news media, thinking about how we're justified, even though we're not, we really aren't righteous, but because of faith in Jesus, we're, we're justified. A little mm -hmm. side note I, met, I made here. What if the news media had a headliner and it said, um, sinners pardoned goes to live with the judge. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Is anybody like, what did you just say? Everybody get that? Yeah. Yeah. I knew my, my mom. There it was. She's my Thomas. Uh, so I said, imagine, imagine because we're justified through, through faith, we're called righteous. That's the book of Romans, right? Right. Imagine, imagine if the same scenario was in real life and the news media had a bulletin and it said this, it said, uh, the sinner has Sin been it. pardoned Pardon. and been set free and called innocent <laughs> as he goes to live with the judge who does. Judge. <laughs> what did you I come up with? <laughs> I like how you, <laughs> yeah. that's good. I, I love, I love saying stuff repeatedly. I like this. Yeah. I love that. Uh, 
That's the only story. <laughs> this is another analogy of this because it works here. It's a, it's a, it's a story of like, we're the bad guy. The, the good guy dies for the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like they don't yeah. do that in movies. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The good guy dies for the bad guy. It's the only right. story where somebody gives away their child for somebody else's child. <laughs> yep. Think about that. That's what makes him divine. And I'm on now because we can't, we can't say we, you might give your own life for somebody else's kid, but not for your kid. Mm -hmm. You ain't giving mm -hmm. up your child and then making your child think that, think about this. Not only did he sacrifice his child, he had to turn his face and reject him. Mm. Mm. Not just give it up, not to let him die painfully, but Separated. he rejected his son. Yeah. Mm. Because we have felt rejection, rejection, and Jesus had to had to go through everything that we felt. And at an ultimate level, the last thing that happened to him, we think the pain of the cross was bad. Okay. No. It's spending every day with your father and always calling him your father. And then one day you become sin for us. And he says, my God, my God, he doesn't call him father for the first time because he doesn't know him as father in that moment. He becomes mm -hmm. sin for us, spent his whole life with the father. And he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He becomes sin for us. But in exchange, we become righteous. He got what he didn't deserve. And we got what we didn't deserve. Right. Yeah. Grace is something we don't deserve. I'm all now. All of us here are not good according to scripture. Mm -mm. We deserve no, not one. physical and spiritual death, but we have a redeemer that loves us. I just want to say that. That's awesome. Amen. Go ahead and read verse six. That's the gospel. I had sorry, as the Holy Spirit just moving, I had to do that. Verse six. For when we were yet without strength. In due mm. time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's me, you, us, all of us. He died for everyone. By the way, sorry, predestination Calvinists. He died for you too. <laughs> Verse seven. There's no limited atonement. Just want to say that. You it's did. not like so. You done? Okay, you on the road seven. tonight. <laughs> okay. right. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, peradventure. For a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm. But God commandeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Ooh, come on. Christ died for us. Mm. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. There's the wrath I was talking about. Now, we're going to run through this pretty quick. There's not very many verses, but I want to point. This is definitely noteworthy. So if you got a pen and paper, write this down. We're about in verse nine says something that we're going to see five times in the rest of this chapter. Anybody know what it is? No. The first two words, what's it say? Much more, much more. The words oh, yeah. much more are going to be used five times and they're going to point to grace every time. Why am I pointing that out? Just because I'm bored? No, because grace <laughs> is representative of the number five. Oh, oh, oh. as much more pointing to grace. And here we go. Much more. Number one, much more. This mm. number one, then mm. much more than the now being justified or declared by his bl blood. Much more than that. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That's that wrath I was talking about. The one we don't want to go through. Right. Right. Okay? Verse, uh, verse 10. We won't go to. That's right. Here's the second one. For if. When we were enemies, when we were enemies before we were called righteous, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. That's capitalized son. That's Jesus. Much more. Yeah. There it is again. Mm. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's grace, by the way. See mm -hmm. that one? Inside, in case you're not sure what that means, much yeah. more. For if we were enemies, that means all of us in this room, were reconciled. In case you don't know what that means, I want to clarify Religion is man's attempt to reconcile himself and um, reconcile. I had a note and what happened to it. Uh, we'll come back to that. I had an answer for that. Um, that's one. I think I have it later in my notes. Uh, make a note with reconcile reconciled uh, for the uh, God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled. There's that grace. We shall be saved by his life again. Grace. Second time. 
Here we go. Got it. Sorry, I just found it. Reconcile is to restore. Reconcile. 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 You can say reconcile, but it's actually, did you look at the pronunciation? No, but. <laughs> reconcile. All right. Reconcile. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So grammar teacher. So reconcile. So you have clarity. <laughs> It means to restore a relationship by the removal of barrier. Well, guess what happens in Luke 16, 19? Lazarus and the rich man were in the abode of the dead, Hades, which is not specifically hell in that reference. It says there was a great gulf, depending on the version. Uh, there was a firm uh, something between them. They couldn't communicate. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. right there, there was a there was a barrier. But reconciles the opposite. That barrier has been removed. We had a mm. barrier. We fell and sinned in the garden, but he found a way or he knew a way to reconcile us back to back to him. Access. Reconcile. reconcile fine. So yeah. we're reconciled. So it's to restore relationship by the removal of the barrier. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So verse 11, and not only so, but we're also uh, we're we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, our owner, Jesus Christ. That's his title, by the way, Jesus, the anointed one, mm -hmm. by whom we now, excuse me, by whom we have now received to tell us finished work. Okay. Yep. The atonement. atonement, that word atonement, you could say it like this at one minute. Come on now. At one minute. One minute. Been reconciled. Mm -hmm. Now we're at one minute with him again. Yeah. Okay. Now received, meaning his because of his finished work to tell us die. That means a battle been won or it's finished. They'd use that in battle at one minute. Mm. So I made a note. This is deep. Look it up later because you're not going to understand it right away. This is a good one. Make a note of this. We're going to learn about this next time, next week. Sanctification. What is sanctification? So justification does not make someone righteous. We're righteous through faith in Jesus. Remember, you're not going to get this right now, probably. Justification does not make someone righteous. Think about the wording. It means a lost sinner is now declared righteous, but his heart has not been changed yet. Mm. So you can be declared righteous, but you still have a heart that's in the process of changing. Do you understand that? Yeah. Sanctification. 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 That's the process yeah. of flushing you out, man. Yeah, cleaning you up. You're righteous because of faith in him. Justification does not make you righteous. Justification is righteous. Yeah, good job. Good work. Catch that? Same thing. So there's a thing we talked about, remember, because of sin, we we why why, why am I at fault? Because of what Adam and Eve did, right? Right. right. What's well, funny, we sure want to adopt the righteousness because of like Abraham. We we like the good stuff. Well, we don't deserve that, but we inherited that blessing. Oh, but you don't like it when we inherit the other one when somebody sinned. And now there's a thing called corporality. There's a word called corporality. If you understood corporality, we understand, we, we, I, let's say, let's say my mom inherited $10 million and she went to be with the Lord and I inherited $10 million. Well, I didn't earn that, but mm. I've, I, I got it through what's called corporality and sins like that because of the first man that got wrapped up the wrong way. We're under that judgment. He started it. Yep. You don't have to personally do it, but you're still under, you're still under that judgment. So we shouldn't complain about it. We should understand that we have a way out. Well, we're descendants of Adam. We're descendants of Adam. Um, which I have an interesting study about the first and second uh um Christ or uh, sorry, the first Adam and last Adam. Adam. I have a yeah. little study about that, it's really interesting. So um, so Eve sinned. Here we go. Look at this. Eve sinned, but she think about this. Eve heard from Adam, right? Mm -hmm. She had to have. Adam heard from who? God. God. He received from God the law. Right. He received. But Eve did not. She heard it from man's law, from her a man. So this is interesting. This is really interesting. Eve sinned, but she didn't violate the law. She didn't violate his command. Adam did. Right. Oh. You catch what I just said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen. Did 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 Abraham uh sorry did, uh um did Adam break one of the Ten Commandments? No. He sinned, oh. but did he break the law? Mm -mm. 
Nope. See, there's a grace period. There's a mm -hmm. law period and a grace period. We're under grace. Yep. We are not judged by the law anymore. Even though the law is perfect, he says, I didn't come to destroy it. I'm not trying to get rid of it, abolish it. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to apply grace and show you how, how it's fulfilled through my son. Son, yeah. Through me, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that Adam heard from God, but Eve heard from Adam. One's from one's from the law and one's from man's law. Honey, is that true? Ooh. Think about that. That there's that's there's good. A, yeah, I just thought that about that it. this morning. That's good. Two that's things good. going on right there. Look into that yep. one day and study that. Yep. Because yep. you can't break the law if the law is not in place yet. Right. But exactly. you can break covenant. Yeah. When somebody says, <clears throat> and this is not a put down of a covenant marriage, it's not. There is a legal covenant marriage written by man, a covenant marriage, mm -hmm. but marriage essentially at its root already was covenant. Covenant, yep. So saying you get mm -hmm. a covenant thing is saying, well, I've appeased man's version. Now, I don't care about man's version, but it's good to do it. I, my mom did it, and I think it's awesome because mm -hmm. um, you're saying, look, I'm committed, and there's nothing wrong with it, but we need to understand that doesn't do anything before God. That is just a man thing. That's a man thing, yeah. God's covenants, when you said the vow and you believed in Marriage wrong, is already, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter what man says. I'm not afraid of man. I ain't worried yeah. about man. I ain't worried about a pastor telling me I had a good sermon. It's nice to hear, but I'm yeah. concerned with how he feels about it. Come on now. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. We have to get this thing done by eight. You guys ready? Verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, Romans 6, 23, talks about the wage of sin is death. And so death passed upon all men, like we just talked about. That's why, underline that, that's why we're judged by that sin. For that all have sinned to come to the, uh, that's Romans 3.23, I think. Yeah. Um, so I want to make a note here. Sin yeah. travels. It's like an infection. Can I tell you how bad it affects and it goes outward? We're a product of that sin, even though we, we didn't do it, but you're part of it. Listen, August 6th, you don't have to write this down, 1945, the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima at 8.15 in the morning. Okay? For a five-mile radius, it flattened everything. There was nothing left. 93,000 people died for 325 kilometers from the radiation. It surround, it affected so many people, thousands, mm -hmm. probably millions. I don't even know. Man now has Adam's radiation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're affected by it. Yep. We're affected by sin, like it or not. Mm -hmm. babies are born into sin whether we like it or not they are that's the sin nature that's the sin nature there's three mm -hmm. kinds of death in scripture i'm not going to go into it there's the physical death there's a spiritual death and then there's a second death well that's another thing i'm not going to get into tonight because we're running out of time go ahead and read verse 13 through 15 but i'm sorry i took over verse 13 13 through 15 for unto the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Number 14. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god in the gift that. by grace which is by one man jesus christ hath abounded unto many glory. i love the word of god so much glory yes. listen glory. real quick we're almost done here this is a good note i want you guys to process this before we go anywhere this is really really important sometimes i get ahead because <laughs> i forgot i studied and then it comes out right there <laughs> listen Man, listen to this carefully. We are not sinners because we sin. This sounds rhetorical, but it's not. Listen closely. We're not sinners because we're si we sin. We sin because we're sinners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anybody not understand what I just said? I get it. Mm -hmm. we it's are, our nature. It's our nature. It's we our don't nature. Sin yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We don't sin. Uh, we're not sinners because we sin. No, it's right. predetermined. We're right. we, exactly. We're yeah. sinners by nature. Yeah. So, Thank you, Adams. 
Yeah, Thank right. you, thanks Adam. a lot, man. <laughs> thanks a lot. But I love God. He he used instead of making uh, uh, Eve feel bad about partaking, I love uh, the fact that Satan tried to use her for sin, and God's like, okay, I'm gonna use you for salvation. I'm gonna send my seed and put it in your womb. Come on. I love yep. that. Yeah, yeah. We always think that the Adam and Eve, the whole story, that oh, it's the first deception story. No, it's not. No, that story <laughs> is about a man who ran into sin knowing he couldn't go backwards. His name was Adam, the first Adam, <laughs> running to Eve, his bride, but it really was a picture of the God. last Adam, Jesus Christ, <laughs> running to us, his bride. Come on now. It was a love story. It yep. was the first love story. Don't get that confused. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. God gets the first order, not Satan. Right. I'm going to keep going. So verse 13, for until the law, sin, it was a, a genetic defect at this point, for until the law, sin was in the world. This is sin. But sin is not imputed. We talked about this. When there is no law, it's not charged against you, but it's sin. He's saying that. I didn't mm -hmm. realize when I went ahead earlier. I'm sorry. It's still a sin, but it's not charged against you. To break man's law, uh, follow God's law, it's okay to break man's law as long as you're following God's law to do it. Okay. okay. Uh, for until the law, sin was in the world, the, the natural the sin, sin was not imputed or charged against us on our judicial record in heaven, right? When there is no mm -hmm. law. Romans 6.23 says, the a gift of God's eternal life, the wage of sin is death. Death. Mm -hmm. Cain was not guilty of breaking the Ten Commandments, because, but he did sin. There's a way out. It's called righteousness through faith in Jesus. So here's something for us today. By the way, uh, uh, here we go. Yeah, verse 514. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even, oh, so it's their fault, right? Even over them, that's us today too, that had not sinned after the similitude, in other words, in the same way, like at the same, you know, we, we weren't them, we didn't do it. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure, that's the type, of him that was to come. You see that? Mm -hmm. yep. Under that judgment. Side note. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I already said this, but uh, two deaths. There's two deaths. This is, this is really, this is noteworthy. This is good. We're going to go into a study on my other show that we're doing at night that's going to talk about hell, heaven, Hades. And for anybody that's unclear about death and all that scripturally, we're going to go into it in depth. But listen, this is good to write down. Two deaths. There's two. The first death is separation of the soul from the body. Right? The spirit mm -hmm. stays attached. Don't get yeah. confused. Spirit's with it. It's the separation of the soul from the body. And the second death, excuse me, the sep the second, excuse me, the second death, which is the one we talked about earlier, is the separation of the spirit from the soul. Ooh. The spirit is life. He breathed into our nostrils. That's the mm -hmm. connection. It's the power, the dunamis, the it's it's the connection to God. But the second death, when you go down to the Tartarus, the eternal hell, the deep, the to home, when we get sent down there, guess what happens to our spirit? The the thing that kept us plugged in and turned on, it gets peeled away for I think that this is my belief, it gets peeled away, and we have eternal we, have, we no longer have a Bluetooth connection to God. Hell is in itself. Eternal separation from repeat God. That? John, please repeat that again. So the first death is separation of our soul from our body. All right. I agree with that when our heart stops. Yeah. The second death, the one that Revelation talks about, is separation of the spirit from the soul. That's instantaneously, isn't it? But listen, the spirit is what gives us life and power dunamis from God. That's his avenue of the Holy Spirit to us. Mm -hmm. But it, but hell, in indefinite uh, article, is eternal separation from God. So in order to cut off communication with God entirely, what leaves? Your, your connection, your cell phone signal, your spirit. Your spirit. Okay. Hey, but hey, only hey, and believers hey. then? Hey. Hey, uh, hey, John. That's yeah, for the ones that, that condemned to hell, the ones that go to the place of torments, the lake of fire, but not to believers. Believers through the Holy Spirit, the soul and the spirit are still in union when they end up in heaven. How soon is that? Do you think that happens? After? Oh, I can't answer that. 
I mean, uh, do you see that immediately, do you think? Well, read the first Thessalonians five. I mean, but I can't definitively say personally. But that um, would be after the judgment seat of Christ. It, it would. Yeah, the beam of seat. Yeah. When he when and we'll get into it. This is my understanding. We have this place called Hades, the abode of the dead. It's also references hell elsewhere. But Lazarus, you know, the rich man, uh, I'm trying to hurry, but Lazarus and the rich man, it says that the rich man was buried and Lazarus was carried off by an angel to Abraham's bosom. Well, there's this area, I believe, mm -hmm. according to scripture, that's called Hades, the abode of the dead, which you have the people in paradise from the guy from the cross because he hasn't ascended yet and finished the finished work. So there's a place called uh, Hades, and that could be the abode of the dead. It could be the ones in damnation, like in Luke 16, where he felt the burning torments, but mm -hmm. also paradise. But there's a gulf fix where they can't communicate with each other. Now, once he goes to be with the Father, ultimately, like when he comes back, you follow me? When he went to be with the Father, that um, am I explaining this right? Maybe that's another day. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that place will be one area one holding cell that'll be for the condemned the people are going to heaven they're they're released but you'll have one area just one area that the hades that'll just be the ones in torments that when the lake of fire when the hell and uh, uh satan are all thrown into the lake of fire at the end of revelation then mm -hmm. that area will be thrown into a place i believe called uh where it's tartar tartarus it means the lowest point of hell but those are like I want to be careful because a lot of that is like what I read, but I don't want to be dogmatic about it. Yeah. So that's kind of a side study. I really don't want to incorporate here. Right. So I want to, sorry, I'm going to back up on that, but yeah, I'm writing a book about it, but um, forgive me if I went too far into that. No, um, I, I, it's just very. Uh, some of that's interpretory. So I really just want to back out of that. Sure, I get that. Um, but there is a first and second death. The first one's a separation of the soul from the body. Second one's a separation from spirit from the soul. Okay, we'll keep reading. Okay. Okay, moving on. Romans 5.15, we're almost done. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Okay, for it is through the offense of one, many be dead. That's Adam. Much more, there it is. There's the third time much more shows up. The grace of God, there it is. And the gift of grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. hath abounded unto us many, right? So we're getting that grace because of him. Give me to keep reading so we can move it. Verse 16, we're almost done. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification or right standing, or mm -hmm. we become righteous through faith in him. We're justified, mm -hmm. we're righteous. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this. Am I moving too fast? You guys catching this? We're good. You're good. Trying to get us at 8 o'clock. For he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin, man, that we might be made righteous of God in him. That might is saying it's a free will choice, faith. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This is the fourth much more, verse 17. For, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, Adam, here we go, much more, much more. grace, they which receive abundance of grace, there it is, and of the gift of righteousness, we just mentioned, shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Okay, verse 18, can we keep going? Okay, therefore, as by the offense, remember the therefore, it's there for a reason. Right. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as by the, remember I said, uh, Romans, well, it doesn't matter. There's a, there's a few of therefores. Therefore, as by the, I have so much in my brain, but I'm trying to compartmentalize what I want to spit yeah. out. It's the problem I have. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment, that's Adam, came upon all men. This is Adam again. In case anybody's yeah. not here, we are under judgment because of Adam. Like it or right. not, take it or leave it. But we also are righteous because of Jesus. If Come on right. now. So, Amen. Can't have one without the other. So, right. therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness, I just mentioned that. I don't know why I do that. Of one, the free gift. So he's saying you get, you get both. Don't complain about the bad one. Right. Just be glad you got the second one. Even so, by the righteousness of one free gift, Jesus gave us grace. So, 
just be happy with that. It came upon all men unto justification of life. You guys ready? Verse 19. We're almost done. Yeah. Three verses. We all good? We're good. Okay. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. There it is. Children. Mm -hmm. Adults. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. There's the positive. Mm -hmm. Here we go with number five. Moreover, the law entered. Here's the law entering now. That the offense might abound. That's Adam to Moses. That's what they're talking about. Moses wrote the commandments. Or Moses didn't, but he received the commandments. That offense might abound. It gets it, it got bigger. But where sin abounded, there's that verse that's on my mom's bathroom wall that people take out of context. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That's on my wall? <laughs> it is, yeah, in your bathroom. Oh. If, if you were a man, you would have noticed it. I promise you, we stand up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so. Be nice. <laughs> um, anyway, so he says, moreover, he says, moreover, the law entered Number five, uh, much more shows up that the offense might abound because of Adam to Moses, but where sin abounded, he says, look, this happened, but guess what happened more? Grace, Grace much, much, much more abound. And I think it's fun that the fifth time, which means grace, number five, the fifth time the grace that he, that he uses much more is it's when he said where sin abounded. Don't forget this. Don't forget it. Grace abounded more. More, yeah, yeah. Satan yeah. loses yeah. at the end, no matter what. Yeah, and he and he mentions that on the fifth mention of much more. I think that's interesting. I notice. I try to notice everything. Last verse. Here we go. It's eight oh one. I'm hurrying, unless you're on the east coast. Uh, that as sin <laughs> hath reigned, its first Adam unto death, even so might grace reign. That's for us. Thank you, Jesus. It's it will reign through, through righteousness unto <laughs> eternal <laughs> life. Eternal life. By Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Wow. Five times much more is mentioned. I want to say this. I'm going to close right now. Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. Anybody know the difference? You want to know the difference. It's the same thing, but it's used differently. I'm going to tell you why. Jesus Christ, when he was here on earth before he says, I'm going to send another comforter, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. he inside of him. So he was Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus, the Christ, Jesus Christ. But when right. he went to the right hand of the Father and he says, I'm going to give you another comforter or a different intercessor, meaning the Holy Spirit will dwell within us in mm -hmm. greater numbers. He says it's greater than I, not better. Now that Christ it's dwelling Jesus. in greater numbers, we have Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Yep. We have the anointing of Jesus in us. There's right. Jesus Christ when he was here. Right. Christ Jesus, the anointed one, anointed one, is inside of us now. Christ Jesus, anointed with Christ. Amen. He's anointed with Jesus. With Jesus. Wow. Same thing, but it's a different location. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good word from God, not from me. It was it good, good tonight. Word. Very good. I'm glad you liked it. I have a show to do, so I have a few minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna pray us out. I have a show to do at nine o'clock tonight. If you guys are late owls, join me in about an hour or a little less. We're gonna talk about Thank righteousness me. and sin and law. I think it's interesting. Before we go. Because our, our, our Bible study today was about law, sin, and righteousness, yep. I choreographed this. For those of you that are confused, we're going to break it way down tonight. Come on now. So said join it us is if you want. Same link, link and everything that we use. So, so it's a private link with me and him. It's like a live show, like on a network. But you can turn on my Facebook, and it'll be on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. So I think it's going to be us talking, but we're going to go into a lot more depth. Well, I'll be... Sound asleep, but I'll be sending my blessing to you. It'll be recorded. You can watch it later. Anyway, <laughs> I got to get us out of here. Did you guys have a good time? I hey, did. Man. Good work. Thank good you, work. Good work. Good work. Always. Job. Thank you. Listen, preparations, everything, and the, the Holy Spirit did what He does, and and I realize that I'm only here because of Him, and and we're blessed to have Him. And I'm just glad you guys are here, and I'm glad He's using me. How about y'all? You hey, glad man. He's using yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. He's so using all of I'm so Amen. glad that you're following what the Lord wants you to do. I'm so, a oh. very proud mama. Very proud. walking in, walking in obedience. I'm on. Okay, now. let's give. Let's pray. Ready. Let's pray. It's eight oh four. I'm late. Father, we just thank you tonight for this word that you brought forth. We thank you for your blessings in our life. And Father, I I personally thank you for the opportunity to be a part of or speak into whatever whatever you want to call it. The, the, the people that are in this group that have been doing this now for well over a year that started Amen. with us. 
back in Shreveport, Father. Oh, this man. if this word affects, um, empowers, equips one single human being, even when it feels like no one's watching, yes. Father, you are, and 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 all. It's my job. It's our job as ministers of the word to plant the seed and let it be watered wherever it needs to be watered. It's not our job to worry about that. Thank you, Father. The word says, let tomorrow worry about itself. Yes. Father, Amen. I am so grateful to get to still be doing this after all this time. Yes. Father, we just thank you for all that you've done in our lives. We ask that where everybody may go tonight, that you be our forerunner, our rear guard, yes. to guard us, to guide us in all of our ways. Father, keep us, keep us in the word. Keep us reading 30 seconds of scripture every night. Father, keep everyone in this group faithful in your word. Father, we thank, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Amen. 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 Hey, Merry Amen. Christmas, everybody. If I don't see you again. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, I'll be back here the day after Christmas. I think it's next Tuesday. I will be doing this the day after Christmas. Okay. We'll be here. Romans chapter six. I think Tuesday falls on the 26th, doesn't it? John, you put that poor boy to sleep. Look at him. <laughs> Look at yeah. him. He has, long, he had a long, he had a long day today. Hey, remember, Uticus, remember Acts chapter nineteen? Well, Uticus we, fell asleep. Yep, exactly. Not your fault, John. Let me tell you, it's I my know. fault because I fed him, and then he yeah, got, yeah, you should have fed him. So it's, fed. it's my fault. I apologize <laughs> for that. You should, you should have fed him. By the way, by the way. My husband sometimes would fall asleep at our church, and some and the pastor would say, "Hey, somebody reach out there and wake up Bob." And one of the guys yelled out, "He goes, you wake him up. You're the one that put him to sleep." Hey, I want to say something before I forget. By the way, thank you, uh, Rhonda, uh, Lana, our best friend, uh, uh, Abraham, who's dating uh, one of our daughters. Uh, Lance Martin from church, my dad, uh, John, thank you for joining. I love all of you for being here. Whoever watches us later on YouTube, we love you. And it's only getting better because I'm taking constructive criticism from my peers. So. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Love you all. We love you. See you next time. God bless. Right. Bye -bye. God bless. Bye-bye.